Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. I've been sent a little challenge by the wife, Jackie, and she smokes one of these vapes. Uh, in fact, she's got four of these. And they've got a little design flaw in that if they fall over, if you stand them up on something and they fall over, more often than not, it cracks the Pyrex glass in the top. Now these things aren't cheap, uh, the Pyrex glass bits, and we probably get through one a week with the four vapes she's got. Um, when they're on charge, the charger goes in the side here, a little mini USB, and the wire gets caught on something, they fall over on a kitchen worktop or what have you, and the glass cracks. Um, it doesn't crack every time, but uh, they are very fragile. So my thinking is to make a little stand to put them in. So they drop in from the top, maybe three of them will fit in there, because there's always one on the go somewhere. And when they're in the stand, the charge lead can still fit in the bottom, and they're not going to fall over, you know, while they're on charge. They're in a, a, like a little sturdy uh, carousel, something like that. So I think what we'll do is a little sketch, uh, come up with a plan, see what materials have I got lying about to make a quick, simple, but, I mean, it's going to sit on a kitchen worktop, it's got to look nice or I'll get told off, a little stand for these things. So let's get on with it then. So let's have a bit of a rough sketch or a design. In fact, on this occasion, I think I'll design it in CAD, which is cheeseboard aided design. <laughs> Aids Workshop CAD. So I think we'll have a little base on it, maybe, I don't know, inch thick, something like that, about 100 mil. 100 diameter, maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll work in metric, 25. Well, with a bit of a shape on it, what have you, just to give a bit of a supportive foot. Um, looking about what material I've got, I've got my piece of aluminium. That's, um, what is that? Uh, it's about 56, so yeah, 50 plus we'll call it. So I think we'll have a disc of aluminium, maybe 10 mil thick, about 50 diameter, something like that, you know, 50-ish, 50 plus we'll call it by 10. Um, I've got some brass bar, um, this stuff, quite a bit of this, I've got you know, a couple of metres of this, uh, 8 mil I think it is, so it might even be 10 mil diameter, which uh, be, can make quite ornamental, so if we have some... Uh, brass risers perhaps on a so three points around the outside um, some means of fastening maybe from the underside and what have you another aluminium disc up here again same diameter would be okay um, you know maybe a bit of a radius on the top or a radius underneath as well we'll see what we what we come up with maybe there as well um, on the tops of there so we'll go times three and overall length, let's have a look. Where are we? Um, looking for... Well, if this sunk into the bottom, to locate the bottom into that plate by 5mm, um, I let's say... I want it to be 75mm overall. I think we'll do it. So from the base here to the top would be 75 so if that's 10 and that's 10, that would be 55. Okay, so we're going to have three support rods and then, again, equally spaced in between the three rods, three holes for this, hole in the top and the bottom. I'll probably sandwich the top and bottom together and drill them as one, the same with the bolt holes for this, drill them as one and then open them up after. So. Uh, that's going to measure, in fact, I'd better measure the diameter of that. And that needs to measure, I'll make it a good fit, let's say 20 mil, 19.8 that measures, so 20 mil. So I want up three holes right through in the top, uh, diameter 20, and then we'll go 5 mil deep in the bottom. Oh, might be a bit deep for the charger, let's have a quick look. I don't want the charging wire to be, uh, yeah, maybe three mil deep. And again, diameter 20. So I've got a cunning plan. Um, maybe some sort of handle on the top afterwards, you know. I don't know. <laughs> we'll come up with something. 
So I think we'll start. I'll see what wood I've got. That's going to be my limiting factor. To see what piece of wood I got for the bottom. And we'll go from there. Being careful here working around the camera and what have you. Um, yeah, you get the general idea. Oh. And then bye eye. enough of that racket so I'm gonna mount it on a piece of 10 mil studding so first job 10 mil all in the middle better struggling with that for some reason anyway that's a 10 mil hole for it it's not fussy at this stage um, just 10 mil hole in the underside so we can now I should have got a wood drill out really but I couldn't be bothered to go and dig one out and I've got some wood drills um, yeah lazy bugger right 10 mil mandrel so I got a piece of 10 mil up in the collet chuck here, tighten down. Oh. All right. <laughs> I'm going to put a washer on the front, but I've just left on the underside just a nut, and that'll give it a bit of grip. there we are we have a piece of wood up in the lathe now I'm gonna wipe the oil off the bed and I'm gonna put down some paper towel um, in the bottom and what have you um, yeah wood in a metal lathe it's awful but uh, it's in need of a good clean anyway so once I finish this it's all gonna have a good clean well I'm no wood turner but what's the worst that could happen <laughs> I've checked it clears the bed, it does. I'd like to find a piece of hardwood for this, but I haven't got any. Well, not in this sort of size. I've got various bits of cheek, but only, you know, 50 mil wide strips, that sort of thing. So, let's have a look. How are we getting there? High speed steel would probably be better, but I have got this uh, one of those ground chips in here, the aluminium chips. Intermittent cut doesn't seem to bother it.
yeah, the idea of this is that it's a, a larger diameter support for the holder. We'll come onto the holder next, I've got an idea for that. But uh, because it's sort of top heavy, we've just got a wide base to stop it falling over. And that's the whole object of the thing. We'll see, uh, we didn't want it falling over. There's a bit of a dent in there. Yeah. I think a bit of a taper on here might look nice. Let's swivel my compound over and uh, machine a taper on it. I've put a radius tool up. Uh, I think I'm going to turn a shoulder on it into a radius and then I'll put the taper on from that back shoulder afterwards. So let's let's just have a, a play with it. So we've gone over the high speed steel this time. That might be a bit heavy on the depth of cut considering how I'm holding it. Call that there far enough. I just put a bit of a taper on it using a compound slide. Uh, so I'm into a rad, it's got a bit of a lip on the bottom, I just need to put some brake edges on it now. And then we'll give it a polish up of some description, so I'm going to hit it with a bit of, uh, what is this? I don't know, a bit of uh, coarse, <laughs> coarse uh, emery tape first, and then we'll go from there. Well, I've given it a bit of a polish up, um, yeah, it's smooth to the touch. Um, I hit a bit of, uh, with a bit of wet and dry, I haven't got any sandpaper, that's <laughs> not the sort of thing I carry. But yeah, as a base, that's not far away. I did have somewhere some wood stain, like a mahogany wood stain, but I can't find it for the life of me. So I think I'm going to just give it a coat of wax. Well, that looks a lot better now. Um, what am I using? Rye wax. Um, it's beeswax polish. I Yeah, okay. Um, rustic pine cleans stains and polishes um, yeah I swear by this stuff I use it on lots of uh, wooden things it's good on the old wooden um, micrometer boxes things like that I've used it on as well I play it with a bit of uh, double O grade uh, wire wool I didn't in this case I put it on with a rag um, leave it a couple of minutes and then polish it up and burnish the surface and yeah it looks alright as a base <laughs> I wish I had a piece of hardwood though Don't tell the missus I got her a vacuum. <laughs> well, back to the card. <laughs> That's our base done. Um, next procedure, a couple of aluminium discs. So I think I'll take this slug of alley. Um, uh, I'll hold it on that end. I'll face that off, centre drill it. Um, skim the OD. And I think I'll just slice off two pieces about 11 mil thick to start with and we'll go from there. In fact, I think I'll probably put a hole through the middle. Um, if I was to put a 6.8 right through, drill it out with a 6.8, um, that'll be a tapping drill for 8 mil. I can open them, I can tap it, um, then slice it off and the first sliced off one, I can open it up to like 8.1 and that will give me the ability to bolt the two together. In fact, it might be worth doing that first. Doing one with an 8mm hole in it. Here's a plan. Yeah. If I do one with an 8mm hole in it, to so go 8mm so deep, slice it off, then do a 6.8 one, I can bolt the 8mm one back on and skin the outsides in one hit. Then I can leave it all on that bit of bar to drill the holes through from the top while it's all in one piece bolted together and I got something to hold it on and then the last job take off the one with the, uh, the top half and slice the bottom bit off and that will allow me then to do the radiuses or radii on the two parts while I'm at it 
Ha-ha! I've come up with a plan. There's method in my madness somewhere, or madness in my method. So, as always, I'm just gently facing off because I'm stuck out a long way. I've had to reverse the jaws, and it won't go on the outer step of the reverse jaws. They just come together just before it touches the OD. That seems to have cleaned it up. So I'm going to set the drill it and then drill it out about 12 mil deep to 8 point. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm going to do it just 8 mil diameter. Nice, good fit on the 8 mil bolt. So, just in with a center drill quickly. Put a WD. Okay. Just as well do this in one go. I'm going to drill it with the 8 mil drill. I can always open it up to 8.1 or something afterwards, but uh, we'll use an 8 mil drill as a starting point. Oh, let's just come back out of the way. Let me stop that truck a minute. Okay, did have plenty of room. <laughs> you don't want to go catching the end of the drill on the rotating part while you're putting it in the truck. Okay. Okay, I'll go 12 turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's twelve turns, one for luck? Yeah. Thirteen turns. <laughs> How can it be thirteen, one for luck? Anyway, thirteen's supposed to be the unlucky number. <laughs> right. I think I'll just put a little chamfer on there now and it'll be better for the centre. Um, better for the centre to pick up on the chamfer than it will be onto that plain 8mm hole now. I could have gone a little bit deeper with the centre drill. I don't know if it would have got that big. Yeah. That'll do nicely and that'll take an 8mm bolt for the later stage. So let's just get that chuck over there, put a centre in. I think we'll do a little skim of the OD. Um, where am I hiding my centre? There it is. Everything to hand, except for when it isn't. I think I'll do a little skim on the OD. Um, yeah, I'll wind it by hand. I'll just put a few of these to try to keep tools put away out of the way otherwise I end up with a, just a pile of tools on the bench and uh, I haven't got a great deal of room as you all know okay so I think just oh no can't quite get back far enough when my tail stop back a bit now I can <laughs> um, yeah I'm gonna use my uh, handy feedy method with the uh, on the end of the lead screw and just skim a little bit back on here just to a clean up and I need to go back let's say 25 mil without the cutting off a little bit more maybe wherever that is that's, that's where I'm going to skim it back to not cleaned up yet. And I'm winding the new hand wheel on the end of the lead screw to do this. Okay. 
just see if that's cleaned up. I think it has. Yep. Oh! Look at that nice. Guard was rubbing on the back there. So we'll give it a squirt. Speed it up. And try and put a finishing cut on this. Well, it's not a finishing cut. I'm probably going to skim it again afterwards, but uh, we'll just tidy it up. Bring it back the other way gently. Put a bit of a finish on. I think the leading edge of that tip is uh, on its last legs. It's cutting a lot smoother on the return trip where it's using the back of the uh, tool, not the leading edge. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put the party tool up now, shall I? I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll put a little 45 on the end of there. Just to uh, get rid of the sharp edge for now. That'll do me. So I'll put the party tool up next and it's going to be slice off a piece of that it's a fair old depth that but uh, yeah i'm sure we'll get away with it so just lined i just squared my parting tool up just line up on the leading edge give myself a zero and we're going to cut off 11 mil so i'll lock my carriage there and part it off okay here we go I'll have to do this in a couple of stages by bringing the high speed steel a bit further out as I go along. But yeah, as you can see, it's, it's no great shore, really. So I'm on the second uh, push out of the parting blade now. I sort of do it in stages. Five or six mil to go now. Yeah, as you can see, I've probably got 10 mil diameter down there, and I know I've got an 8 mil hole through it. I don't want to part it right off um, because it could cock when it breaks off and jam against the center, and then we have a crash. So, yeah, when you're parting off um, with a center in it, it's, it's a bit iffy. So, uh, I don't like it. So, I'm just going to hacksaw that off. I got a bit of wood down across my bed. Whoop! You see me? I banged on a bit of wood then. If I hadn't had a bit of wood there, I could have damaged the bed. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, it was mill, mill and a half wall thickness there. It's a usual crack. Send the drill first. And then we want a drill chuck and a 6.8 drill. So let's just put that away. There's a drill chuck and a 6.8. Make sure we clear the chuck. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
that's the taper tap. I've squirted it with a bit of WD. It seems to be bottoming out there. And just put the plug tap in. I didn't want to drill it, uh, you know, way deep because I want to save as much of this aluminium as I can after I part off the. Uh, Oh, a squirt. After I part off the 10 mil piece, so that's about as steep as I'm gonna get it. Oh. Try it once more. I think I got a bit of swarf in the bottom of the hole. Yeah. Well, it's more than 10 mil deep anyway. Right, so um, I've still got a little champer in there, I think. But if I put a little champer on the other end again, I can put the centre back in to steady it all because it's still stuck out a long way. I'm going to remove my winding handle. And now I can flick the emergency stop off because I did push the emergency stop because I had the winding handle in. Right. So I want a little chamfer on me. I'll just put a little chamfer in the chuck. And that just gives somewhere for the centre to pick up on. Okay, um, am I going to part it off at this stage? No, I'm going to put the top piece back on here. Of course I am, I've forgotten about that. Yeah, put a little M8 Allen bolt. And I'm just going to bolt that new one, or the one I've already parted off, onto the one I just machined. Uh, six mil Allen key somewhere. <laughs> Let's have you out the way. Uh, Sixteen mil spanner on my jaw, and just lock that onto there. Okay. So this throwing slightly. I did file off the the little hacksaw cut. Yeah, it's growing ever so slightly. So I think what I can do now is reskin the two together. I'll face down as far as I can go on there. I'm not dead worried about it. The original one isn't throwing, so uh, yeah. First job. I think we'll just uh, tickle across this end here. This part here is going to be the, let's see, well it's going to be the top plate. I'm going to have to put it up in the, uh, up in the chuck on its own at a later stage. So let's have a, a skim off the OD now, screw the pair up. Speed it up a bit. There's very little clearance in the bolt hole in the middle. the two of them up. Just come back across the surface now gently. I really need to turn that tip. I've been a bit mean with tips lately because uh, I didn't have any but yeah I've got plenty in stock now. Huh? Leaving the tips in there uh, 
bit longer than they should have been. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to turn that tip, I think. I want to mark a circle on this space of the pitch circle diameter of the three holes that are going to be drilled for the uh, that the vape sinks into. Um, basically, I want to be 10 mil out from that bolt head, and that would allow this to sit right in and leave about three mil on the outside. So I'm going to touch off on that bolt head or line up on the outside of that bolt head with my tool. So bear with me. That's about there. Set a zero and come out, physically come out 10.5 millimeters. Which is, oh, <laughs> smack on, there. Now that will allow, let me just idiot proof myself, well, about 11 mil on the outside, in fact I'm going to go back to 10 mil, I'm going to call it 10 mil and put a little groove around the outside. Come on. <laughs> There, 10 mil. So I'll just start that up slowly. And I think if I put a bit of Sharpie mark on there, let me just come back out of the way. Let me just uh, get rid of any residual WD 40. But we won't use a sharpie. Use a permanent marker. Okay, so I want to put a witness line, little groove, <laughs> further in than where I uh, marked. Okay, a little groove. <laughs> Now I want to divide this into three and that job is done for me quite well by the jaws on the chuck. So if I just come back out of the way, I'm going to give all this a bit of a clean up and then we'll come up with a method of locking the chuck. I think what we'll do is clamp a parallel on the outside of the jaw with a toolmaker's clamp, bring it down to touch the bed and I'll scribe a line. Then I'll move the parallel to the next jaw, and we will divide into this into three 120 degree portions. <laughs> Can you see why I was doing three parts, not four? Yeah, that was the plan. <laughs> so I got a little piece of lathe tool back against the chuck, and clamped with a toolmaker's clamp onto that vice jaw. I'm going to push my emergency stop button, you just heard that. Because if I was to start the laser up with it like this, well, again, we'll have a crash. So if I bring this down until the parallel, or the, in this case, piece of tool steel is against the bed, we'll call that position one. I'll bring my tool forward. Let me just lock it, okay and I will scribe a line. There we are. A bit deeper. And there is my first line scribed. So again, I'll just bring it up out the way. Move to the next jaw. Put in the tool on the same side of the jaw. Clamp it in position. Back, not back against the chuck there. Now I am. Touch against the bed again. And scribe a second line.
rinse and repeat. Against the bed. And there's line number three. Okay, so as you can see, I've now got three lines scribed on the front of there. They're only very shallow, using the edge of the tool. I can set to pop those three holes and drill them through. I think I'll drill them through with something like a six mil drill um, up in my drill press. Um, and I'll just enter them into the second part or into the body of it um, again. The other set of holes, I want to be blind in the top here, so I want them to come from the other side after I've parted it off. So we'll probably use a very similar method when I do the other side. So let's just take that off there. But yeah, simple way to divide by three. Had I put it up in the four jaw, I could have divided it, as you can imagine, by four or two. Anyway, that's a long story, isn't it? But yeah, quick, simple three-point indica uh, indexing on the PCD I want. I'll set to pop the three holes, get it up in the drill press, and I'll just drill the three holes, six mil diameter, and that will spot through. Whatever's in this top one will be in the bottom one as well, and it gives me a reference so that they all line up at the end. Just a little afterthought. I think I'm going to just skim this old D to give myself a chance of lining it up when I cut to put it back up afterwards. And I might even face the bottom to keep it square as well. Um, so that I've got a, a square, a known square face to stand it on when I'm drilling it through. On the same note, and for the same reason, I've just skimmed the bottom face. So I've turned it around the chuck held it on while I've already machined, it's all running nice and true. I'll just skim that over. In fact, and I've got a sharp edge. And what don't we like? We don't like sharp edges. <laughs> just break that edge. Here we go. Yeah, just gonna send the drill the three uh, center box first. So, six mil holes through the top plate, left the witness marks of the six mil holes in the bottom plate. Um, I can now part this off. So I'll bring the centre back up, part it off, exactly the same procedure as you saw me do with the last one. So I've got the part with the uh, three six mil holes in, and I'm just skimming off the, uh, the marking outlines. Passing through the three holes. First, go back to my CAD drawing. I decided to drill right through this base plate so that I can put a piece of rubber in the bottom, in the hole, to get the height right. And that will give like a, a bump stop for these to sit onto a piece of rubber. I don't know. Uh, you know, whether it'll damage it or what have you, if, it, if it's just right through. So, yeah, a little piece of rubber in the bottom. Plus, the added bonus is it's a lot easier to drill a hole 20 mil right through than it is to do a flat bottom hole. Anyway, <laughs> method in the madness again. I've got some 10 mil brass, which I'm going to use. I'm going to have, again, three rods holding the top away from the bottom. If I screw the two together again, and I drill up through the base with a 5 mil drill. That will put a 5 mil hole in the top and a 5 mil clearance hole. Well, that will be afterwards. What that will mean is I'll be able to tap a hole in the top M6, a blind hole, and just open out in the bottom and countersink it for some M5 countersink screws. And basically, all I got to do is turn up a straight rod, a set length to a shoulder with an M6 thread turned on one end. So yeah, that keeps things simple. Um, right, I missed the footage of drilling the holes, but they are there. I've simply scribed in from the outside um, a little line, and I've eyeballed with a rule. It was quite simple, really. I could sort of uh, eyeball the centre point, 
line the rule up on this hole, this hole, and the centre point there, and scribe a line close enough for what it's doing. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I don't know whether it shows, but they, you know, the three holes are pretty much equispaced. And I have actually put my little dividers on them, and they, you know, they, they, for what they're doing, perfect. Well, I think that's about it for this episode, guys. Apologies for missing the drilling of the holes, but it was just drilling holes. Um, the, how to locate the positions was the interesting bit. Anyway, I do realise that this product isn't an engineering product, but it is a product that's been engineered. And it demonstrates, or I hope it demonstrates, a few useful techniques along the way. Anyway, that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all very soon in part two. Cheers now.